for those who proclaim, profess to be followers of Christ are neglecting justice and mercy in this area. You know, we're, we're looking at 43 years. This is 43 years since Roe v. Wade and millions of children each year being murdered in our midst. And I wanted to uh, first say before I talked about uh, just one of the sort of specific projects we, we do to offer as an opportunity for Christians to be a voice in their community. Uh, coming off this, the Planned Parenthood uh, expose of what they were doing and harvesting baby parts and selling the parts of their victims and there's been a lot of outrage about this and appropriate and that's a, an appropriate outrage for sure and but but one of the things that sticks out to me with this that we ought to consider is the outrage that things have slipped so far in, in, on our watch that this is going on and they're defending it. They're trying to defend it. There's, there's an actual debate going on, trying to justify it. And the, the fact that this has gone on so long, the killing, that now we're at the point of where we're trying to just fight to say, well, don't sell their remains, when we should be saying the killing needs to stop. And our outrage ought to be that the killing is still going on. Yes, it's horrible they're selling the remains, but the killing needs to stop. They're selling the remains because they're murdering these children. And that's the reality that nobody can deny as much as the culture wants to deny it. And you, each of you, are a voice to come against that denial, to be a voice of truth and reason in a culture that's calling good evil and evil good. What could be a better example of that? And so I want to encourage you to consider that not so much to focus on the evil of Planned Parenthood, which certainly that is a wicked thing they're doing, but the evil of apathy about it, the evil of allowing us to become comfortable with it and making peace with it in our midst. No more. Don't be that person. Be the one who fears God far more than man and be, be a voice of his truth in this day and age because there's so few. Most are remaining silent. You be a voice that murder is wrong, that human beings are made in the image of God, and therefore it is wrong to take the life of a human being, especially that of a baby, a baby in the womb, defenseless, without a voice. That is wrong, and it ought not happen. It needs to end now, and you be a voice for that, and don't stop. And I, and I want to just say one other word uh, of encouragement about that. Say, uh, besides, you know, that we, we need to every day repent of our apathy. I need to repent of my apathy and say, God, do I think about this the way you do? But to go, but to go with this, in the book of Jeremiah, I think it's chapter 24, he, he's telling Jeremiah, go to my people. He says, go to my people and proclaim my word. And he says, don't diminish a word. So he says, don't downplay it. Don't try and soft pedal it. Don't diminish a word. He says, proclaim it at the gates where they worship. And one of the things he, was, he told Jeremiah in that book, you see, is he says, they're sacrificing, they're sacrificing their children to Moloch. And he says, it's something so heinous, it never even entered my mind. God says it's something so heinous, it never entered his mind to sacrifice children. That was one of his messages to, to Jeremiah. He says, this needs to stop. My people need to stop this. And you need to be a voice against it. He says, go and don't diminish a word. And here's the part. He says, perhaps they will listen. God says this. Perhaps they will listen. Now, I believe that God, God knows everything. He knows the future. He knows the past. He knows the present. Everything. How is it that he would say, perhaps they would listen? I'm not sure I can explain that, but here's the thing I think we take away with that. We go out and we keep that same attitude. We go first to be obedient to God, to be obedient, to proclaim justice and mercy, and to love our neighbor as ourselves, but perhaps people will listen. And we know, we hear stories that there are some that will listen. But even God said that. And God also says in his word, in, uh, uh, might have been Joshua, remember Pastor Kean was teaching on this recently where God said I'm gonna make each of you like a thousand men you go and I make you like a thousand men so the numbers might be small 
But you go, God with, with God with you, you have no worries. Okay, so go and be a voice. Amen. So thank you again for being here. We, if you didn't get one of our handouts, just some contact information um, of, of uh, the Abolitionist Society of Vancouver, where we're just trying to pro um, provide things that people can do. Sometimes your schedule doesn't allow you to be at a high school. You just can't be there when the kids are getting out or, or arriving. Um, sometimes you can't be at the Planned Parenthood when their hours are operating. Um, there are lots of lots of things we, we're trying to help people to do so they can be a, a daily consistent witness against the evil of abortion and a daily consistent witness for Christ and the, the gospel. So um, get, if you could just get one of our contact cards if you didn't get one already. And uh, we're just, it's just one other opportunity. And uh, we mentioned our, our project. We try to go to the high schools. We've been to most of the high schools in Clark County at least once where we just go out there, give the kids information, try and pro proclaim the truth, share the gospel with them, show them what abortion looks like, and explain the facts and reality of it. Uh, we'd love to work with any of you or talk to any of you or help any of you if you need that. So thank you again for being here, and thanks, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you.